Throughout the years, Five Nights at Freddy's has picked up quite a few peculiar characters to fill its sizable animatronic roster. First it was the original five, then the next lot, then the one who started it all, and then the reflections of the memories of the murders. Some of the characters were more important than others and held vital roles in the story. Others sort of faded into the background as side acts, but there were a few odd cases along the way. Ones who played a small role in the grand scheme of things. And nobody has a smaller but equally important role than Plush Trap. Plush Trap is a small toy rabbit animatronic who resembles Springtrap. At his time of reveal, he was the smallest animatronic, and the first to be featured in a minigame and exclusively to it for some time. He's small, greenish-yellow, with large eyes and sharp teeth, and is often depicted sitting in a chair, such as in his minigame. Plush Trap's name initially seems to just be Plush Springtrap, and while that's sort of the case, there's a deeper meaning to it revealed in FNAF 4, where the crying child sees a girl playing with her Spring Bonnie plush and refers to it as a Finger Trap, or says her dad calls it that. Which means Plush Trap's name in-game likely originated from the crying child's memory corrupting this into the name Plush Trap. Plush Trap seems to be a moderately popular character in the FNAF fanbase, like, he's not Roxanne Wolf and daycare attendant levels of popular, but he's a familiar face who doesn't often get forgotten, just occasionally overlooked. He casts a tiny shadow, but a shadow nonetheless. Plush Trap's story begins in FNAF 4, both in the real world in the cutscenes, and in the minigames in between nights. The fun with Plush Trap minigames are not mandatory, but optional games to earn perks for the following night. A boost two hours into the night. Losing the game doesn't kill you, but it means you can't get the perk, and that is a pretty juicy perk. The minigame takes place in an eerie dark hallway. The walls and carpet are similar to the ones found in the bedroom on the nights, so is likely connected. A lone window sits up on the wall at the end of the hall, and there are two doorways on either side of it. At the end, Plush Trap sits on a chair, but he won't sit there for long. Plush Trap will climb down and start darting in between doorways, edging closer. There's an X on the floor and you have to hear for the footsteps to get closer before shining a light on him to get him to stop on the X. Like the rest of FNAF 4, it's down to listening, timing, and a moderate amount of luck. Plush Trap doesn't appear in the nights though, he's just in this minigame. And with the Halloween update he was replaced with Nightmare Balloon Boy, an upgrade from Ankle Biter to Floor Shark. Story-wise, during one of the cutscenes, like I mentioned earlier, the crying child, the main protagonist in the game, talks with a girl outside of the assumed diner, who has a rabbit plush. She says, Where's your plush toy? Mine is Spring Bonnie. My daddy says I have to be careful with him, or I will pinch my finger. He's a finger trap, he says. This certainly sounds like plush trap, and it fits that it looks like a normal toy instead of the grotesque nightmare scene in the minigames, as this is the real world. Now, there was a time when Dream Theory, or the idea that the FNAF series was just a dream by the crying child, was heavily implied by Scott to be canon. He posted these three lines during a live stream that spelt it out. Four games, one story. In the FNAF 4 minigame, why would the mini Chica be missing her beak? And, what is seen in the shadows is easily misunderstood in the mind of a child. Currently, Dream Theory is not, or is no longer, canon. But it should be of note that if it truly was canon at that time, then Plush Trap, or Finger Trap the Spring Bonnie, was possibly the object that inspired Spring Trap in the crying child's mind. This, of course, isn't important anymore, but it's neat to think about. That the relation between their looks was, perhaps at one time, important. That is the entirety of Plush Trap's role in FNAF 4. Plush Trap doesn't appear in Sister Location, but there is an interesting Easter egg here. In the Breaker Room map, there are a couple of locations that do not appear in the game. One of them is clearly the hallway that Plush Trap resides in during the FNAF 4 minigames, as one of the observation rooms. And there's even a square symbolizing an animatronic being there. Which seems to confirm that Plush Trap does exist outside of the never-ending nightmare of FNAF 4. But he is not seen in person. In fact, Plush Trap doesn't appear again for a while, until he returns in Ultimate Custom Night. Plush Trap is a secret animatronic, meaning that he can only be summoned randomly by Dee Dee, 
He'll appear by Funtime Foxy's stage on a chair randomly, and you'll have to stare at him to get him to leave, after which he won't return. He's sort of a one-and-done deal. Plush Trap doesn't get any lines here, unlike many of the other animatronics. Plush Trap's next big role is in FNAF AR Special Delivery, the FNAF mobile game. Plush Trap was one of the last animatronics added to the game and had quite a bit of fanfare surrounding his release probably both because of his popularity and because he was coming in with brand new mechanics in comparison to the others. The normal gameplay of FNAF Special Delivery involves turning around while an invisible animatronic circles you. Then eventually they charge and you can shock them. While FNAF AR shook up the mechanics for some of the characters, such as Mangle and Ballora, where you have to pick up the pieces they drop, battling Plush Trap is a completely different beast. Instead of taking place in your home, spinning around and chasing the animatronics down, the encounter dumps us in an eerie hallway with a chair at the end, just like Plush Trap's minigame. Though instead of trying to catch him on an X, you have to shock generators at your sides while looking back at Plush Trap to keep him from creeping closer. Then, once fully charged, you shock him once he's standing in this little puddle. Then the encounter is over. There is so much about Plush Trap's role in AR that's unique. He's one of the few small animatronics who isn't a helper for another animatronic. His encounter is in its own AR room, something that was only used other than this in the DLC, The Dark Circus. He got two skins even though he was released late, which is a healthy amount considering when he dropped. Plush Trap's two skins were Arctic Plush Trap, a frosty snow bunny, and Piranha Plush Trap, an utterly garish sea bunny. Both of them have their own themed snowy and underwater hallways as well. It's actually a good showing from this plush bunny. No voice lines, though. FNAF AR gave a lot of characters voices that Ultimate Custom Night did not, such as Classic Freddy, but again, Plush Trap remained mute. Not to his detriment, though. I feel like any voice you could give Plush Trap would probably be a little too goofy. But that aside, it is surprising that he got such treatment even though he's not that huge of a character. From how much Plush Trap was advertised and how quickly he got skins, Maybe there was a hope that his new mechanics would add life to the sinking, si semi-sinking ship? Plush Trap's release wasn't immediately before FNAF AR's two-year-long hiatus, but it was pretty close. And the upgraded mechanics were too detailed and elaborate to just be another animatronic, you know? Perhaps Plush Trap was a test for the eventual Dark Circus DLC, which relied on AR environments as well but I'm sort of regretful to say that Plush Trap's FNAF AR presence was really his biggest and only hurrah. It puts his FNAF 4 appearance to shame, but other than that, his appearances are pretty... tiny. Speaking of that FNAF 4 minigame, it makes its grand return in Help Wanted, as does Plush Trap in Glorious VR. It's give or take about the same deal, sitting in a hallway waiting for him to get close. Sometimes mini arenas appear, there's a harder mode with Nightmare Balloon Boy, and unlike FNAF 4, this is a proper level and not just a bonus minigame, so you do have to complete this one. Outside of the level, Plush Trap has a few various appearances in the game. You can win an action figure of him, there's a cutout in the corn maze, um, and he also appears as a surprise jump scare sometimes when you open presents you win at the end of levels. This doesn't affect your victory at all, and you won't game over. Well, you kind of game over, but it doesn't count. It doesn't erase your win. Now, I haven't heard a confirmation on this, so this is fully speculation. But Security Breach was supposed to have a survival mode where you ran around and collected gifts. There were data mine jump scares for both the plush babies and moon plushies that could hop out of the present and either spook you or possibly end your run. As far as I'm aware, there was no data mine remnants of plush trap. But if this mode finished, we might have seen him there too, maybe. Alas though, Plush Trap doesn't appear in Security Breach. Well, in person, he does appear on an arcade cabinet called Plush Trap Chaser. This is a reference to a Fazbear Fright story that I'll get into in just a little while. And since then, we haven't had any Plush Trap appearances, but he often appears in merchandise. Even getting some spots in merchandise that's pretty exclusive, such as the little vinyl doll line. So Plush Trap himself is more in a hiatus than being left behind, and I'd expect him to reappear at any time. With the game squared up, it's time to move on to the books. Now before I get into the actual Plush Trap story, I feel like maybe I should bring up Theodore since the two show some similarities. 
Theodore is Charlie's favorite toy rabbit from the Silver Eyes trilogy. The thing was built by her father, Henry, and used to say, I love you, Charlie, in his voice. Um, I don't know why I gave him some sort of weird, glamrock Freddy voice, but it wore out like an old Hallmark card after so many years, and after being abandoned in her house with the rest of her stuff after Henry's death. Theodore, when not accidentally being called a bear, lol, is described to possibly resemble Plush Trap, as he is a rabbit doll capable of moving his joints, at least one arm to wave. Your mileage may vary on the different illustrations. Now, I am not saying Plush Trap and Theodore are directly connected. I am more so saying that they may deviate from the same line of toys, especially since Plush Trap is supposedly a nightmarish and worn version of a Spring Bonnie plush. The real-life Spring Bonnie finger trap likely looked more like Theodore than Plush Trap, if you think about it. But now onto the real story, out of stock. The story involves Oscar, a boy who has had a bit of a rough life. He's raised by his mother and is often forced to make sacrifices, like when she yanks him out of school to come work at the nursing home that she works at. As someone with, let's see, one, two, three people in my family who worked at nursing homes, I don't think that would fly. And as someone who is somewhat familiar with the school system, I don't think regularly doing that would fly either. Not only that, it's specifically to tend to patients. Like, ma'am, you're a nurse. That's your job, not your son's. I wouldn't be that annoyed by this, but this is one of the Fazbear Frights' many honor thy mother and father stories that only succeeds in proving that every FNAF parent fails in one way or another. She's only human. She's a book character, I get to judge. Anyway, that's not even important. That's just what drives Oscar to get himself into the situation he gets stuck in. The actual story involves him wanting to get a new plush trap chaser, which is a Freddy toy that chases you around like a hellish Tickle Me Elmo. He gets to the mall and it's like Black Friday and things are gone. And then someone returns one and it's like the ugliest thing anyone's ever seen. It's got mushy eyes and human teeth. He doesn't know what it is, but he skirts out with it. Well, I mean, he does pay, but he makes off with it when they aren't selling it. There's like three workers standing around and this kid runs over, grabs it, and runs off. But eventually, he starts to feel guilty about stealing it. He tries to return it the day after, but the store just disappeared like a mirage in the desert. Ew, Oscar, where did you get that thing? Why, from that little shop right over? There. <gasps> oh no, wait, it was over there. And I know what you're gonna say, Fazbear Entertainment moves quick. Yeah, they move so quick that they refurbished the entire store into a Halloween store overnight. Anyway, he's stuck with the rancid thing, and apparently it doesn't work. Until the next night when he's hanging out at his house with his friends Isaac and Raj, who can be best described as Oscar's friends. They're not bad characters, they're just, they just don't have any specific quirks I can make cracks at. There's a storm outside and the power dies, and Plush Trap hops up and eats through a door. No, I'm not kidding, he actually does. They use the world's worst flashlights to keep it at bay. They like die in two seconds, which I suppose is canon to the FNAF universe. They bolt for the nearby train tracks, and thankfully, there's a train coming. As someone who lives by train tracks, how very convenient. But also, hey, maybe they live in a town where the train's still viable. Anywho, they juke the plush trap, and it gets splattered by the train and dies. Oscar and his friends survive, and the next night he spends Halloween at his mother's job again. But she gives him a toy and says sorry. The end. In a later epilogue, it is revealed that after this point, the Stitch Wraith, Jake and Andrew, strolled up and gathered up Plush Trap's pieces while getting eyeballed by a homeless man. And later, Plush Trap is confirmed to be Eleanor. Well, kind of. Rancid Plush Trap was apparently made by Eleanor, but considering she was apparently like 20 other animatronics in disguise, likely she was controlling this one too. She transformed herself into Invisible Eleanor and pulled a whole Resident Evil 8 thing without the tragic, interesting characterization. And that's the story of the Plush Trap Chaser, one of Fazbear Frights' better stories. No, I'm not kidding. Props to Plush Trap Chaser for actually depicting Plush Trap, for the most part, how he functioned in the games. For having it be an actual animatronic threat who we know about, and not having any sort of last minute twists or anything. No magic goo, no transforming into sea bunnies or candy, or a wooden signpost or anything like that. Just a rancid animatronic busting down doors or eating doors. Also, this. Uh -huh. This is what it looks like in the graphic novel. 
this feels like the sort of design that was made exclusively to be a meme. And it doesn't really match the description in the story, but that's not a new thing, really. I can give it kudos for being stylized, at least. Because if it wasn't, let's be frank, Plush Trap is not that scary. This thing... I don't feel right about this thing. Also, also, apparently in the story, Plush Trap is said to be able to mimic voices. This is something shared through a couple of animatronics, most notably Funtime Foxy and Mimic, and isn't presented in any other media, so it is assumed to be for this sole disfigured plush trap. Or, again, it could just be an Eleanor thing. And with that, we're coming to the end of our story about our special little guy. Plush Trap the Precious. So what do I think of Plush Trap? If you were to base it solely off his first appearance, I probably wouldn't think much of Plush Trap. But he has grown on me. He sort of was the definition of a filler character, but over time he's gotten his own little niche into the animatronic lineup. He managed to get probably the best representation in FNAF AR from a stylized mechanic approach, got a story in Fazbear Frights that does him justice, and still returns for merch and showings every now and then. Will he come back? Oh yeah, certainly, eventually. Do I think it'll be a starring role? Probably not. Though I do think his story, Out of Stock, is one of the more likely ones to get the treatment of being turned into a game if Into the Pit takes off and they decide to make more of those. That counts, especially for a character this detached from any big lore ramifications. And that's fine. Plush Trap doesn't need to be a part of the greater lore. His little spot gives him a big enough role for him to fill. Thank you for watching. That seems very sudden. <laughs>